So uh, in this lesson, we will start with uh, the four. We have seen world before, and uh, today we will see four. But uh, first of all, uh, le let's see how to download the examples. Uh, we can find examples uh, for lesson 13 at the course page. Uh, we can download them here in uh, archive format, which is the, and uh, if you, if you access the Linux training environment, then the, the, they can be found also on this directory user. Local examples. Lesson 13. And uh, I'm going to copy all of them here. Now let's start with a simple example, a simple for example, uh, in command line. That's from you. Yes. Hello. Hi. Can you please um, uh, show the window to the virtual? Yes, the yes sure, sure, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, let me share the window, uh, not full screen, window. And now let's start with a for simple for example for uh, I in A B C D two echo I done. So this is a variable, and uh, this is a list of of words. A list of words are words that are se separated by empty uh, spaces, uh, usually. Uh, the separator can also be uh, customized, but uh, usually the separator is an empty space. So here we, we have a list of words separated by empty space. And uh, for each uh, variable, for each value of i, uh, we do uh, this action. Or there, there can be several actions separated by semicolon or in a script in different lines, echo, echo i, the variable i. Uh, we can rewrite uh, this uh, example like this. Sorry, d, a, from a to d. Well, if you remember, this is a shell expansion. Uh, the shell expands this uh, range into this uh, list of uh, words. And so it is uh, practically uh, the same as uh, this, uh, this one, this example. But uh, any uh, list of uh, words uh, can do. For example, instead of this, instead of this we can uh, use uh, So again, this uh, star.sh uh, is expanded by shell, and uh, when a shell expands it, uh, it uh, replaces it with a list of all the files in this uh, directory, uh, which are these files here. And so uh, I takes uh, all the values of, as value of all these uh, file names and, and prints them. Uh, let, let's say that uh, we do the same uh, command, but in an empty uh, directory. For example, now what what we see? Uh, we see that uh, shell cannot expand this. Uh, start of sh because the directory directory is empty and there are no files or directories in it and so uh, this is left uh, as a string as a single word and so it just prints uh, this one 
uh, in a bash uh, script, we can uh, protect uh, against this kind of uh, error by checking first whether uh, whether the file uh, that we are uh, printing here uh, exists or not. And we can do it like this, for example. So the, the command is this one, and it, it is a compound command. Uh, first of all, uh, this command is executed, which is a kind of test that checks whether the file uh, this exists as a file or a directory. If it exists, then uh, this command uh, is executed, echo. Otherwise, echo is not executed. So in this case, it is working correctly. So uh, there are no files, so it prints nothing. And if uh, we execute it in the directory above, we, uh, which contains files, then again, uh, it will print all, all the files. So we check first whether the file exists and then uh, execute echo. Let's see an example. An example script. This is a script which finds the uh, longest string in, in a file. Uh, the, the longest word. So uh, it is getting some, uh, some words as uh, arguments and uh, uh, this dollar one if you remember from the last lesson, contains the first argument. And uh, it is checking that the first argument is empty or not. While the first argument is not empty, this is for not empty, then do uh, this one. Uh, if the file is readable, this test uh, is for readable. Uh, uh, then uh, we are going to uh, to get the with this command strings get all the words in in the given file and uh, this is a this is replaced by shell with uh, the with the result of, of this command and we get all the words one by one and uh, we uh, find the length of the of each word uh, with this command echo uh, echo this dollar uh, uh, i dollar uh, i is is a word in in the list of words and uh, this n tells echo to print, uh, to not to print end of line so an end of line will be an extra character we just print the word without end of line this word count with the option C counts the number of characters. So uh, overall, this this command uh, finds how many characters are in uh, in this dollar i uh, variable, and stores it in the variable length. Now, if uh, length is uh, greater than the maximum length, then we we store the length to the variable max length, and we also keep uh, the word to the variable max word. Initially, they are empty and, and, and zero, are initialized, initialized as empty as zero, and zero. And then uh, we print the name of the file and then uh, the, the, maxi the word with the maximum uh, length and also the, the length of this, of this word. So uh, the basic uh, script, uh, is uh, this one uh, in, inside it and inside while. This while is to, to process several arguments. So uh, this script can process uh, more than one argument and it does it in a while uh, loop. So it first gets the first argument and then this shift 
drops the first argument and shifts all the argument, all the arguments. And the second, second one becomes the first one, the third one becomes the second one, and so on. So uh, let, let us uh, try. So this dot dot sh is expanded by shell to uh, to give this uh, list of all the files in the, in this directory. Now uh, we are going to run. Uh, this script long, longest word dot sh uh, and it will take uh, all these arguments. So uh, we see that the concept, concept of the word is something that does not contain spaces because a space is uh, used uh, as a separator between words in bash. So we can we get strange words like strange words like this, for example. And in in this script, for example, the longest word is this one, uh, which contains which contains fourteen uh, characters. So uh, we saw that we were using this command strings. And uh, for example, so it, it just uh, uh, gives the, the strings of of this uh, of this file. It, it returns the, the strings of of this file. We, we get out of uh, strings and uh, for, for each word uh, in uh, this list, uh, we do this, uh, this loop. Let's see a modified version of this. Now, uh, the modification is that we have replaced the, the while here with a uh, for i. So, here uh, we don't have a list of words for, for i in list of words. If, we, if the list of words is missing, then uh, by default, uh, the shell uses the uh, positional uh, parameters, the positional arguments. So again, uh, this is going to take the first argument, the second argument, the uh, third argument, and so on. And uh, this is a little bit more cryptic the, than the while uh, loop, but uh, it is uh, simpler to uh, to write. And the the rest of the the rest of the script is except that uh, now that we are using i for the name of the of the file. Uh, we are using J for the word, uh, a different variable. So these variables uh, I and J are usually usually used with uh, for loops, uh, and uh, this is a tradition that uh, dates from the days of uh, uh, Fortran. Fortran used I and J uh, as uh, as uh, uh, variables uh, for for the loops. And the rest of the string is almost the same. We can try it again with the second version of the script. So the main point of this script is just to demonstrate uh, this uh, for i without a list of arguments. Uh, without a list of arguments, it will get, uh, uh, without a list of words, it will get the positional parameters or the arguments. Uh, as, as the default uh, list list of words. Now the the command for 
also has a syntax similar to the syntax of C. For example, for and this is for numeric uh, expressions uh, with uh, double uh, parentheses. So you see that uh, this is very similar to the C syntax. Instead, that, uh, only the difference is that we are using double parentheses, which uh, in the bar scripting indicates arithmetic expressions. And si uh, since this is an arithmetic expression, then uh, inside the arithmetic expressions, we don't use uh, dollar signs in, uh, in, front, in front of variables. Uh, let's see a small modification to the program uh, sysinfo that uh, we have seen last time. So the modification here uh, is at the last function, report on space. And uh, here we, we are using a for loop here. This for i in uh, D list. And, uh, and uh, D list is taking uh, the value of all home directories. If the user who is running this uh, script is uh, the the, the administrator, the root. So uh, this test is checking whether the user who is running the script is the root. If the user uh, is the root, then uh, as a tier list, we get all uh, the home directories of the users. Otherwise, if it is a user different from root, then we just get a single uh, directory in the tier list. And uh, then this this uh, for loop does the printing of uh, the directory uh, in both of these cases, uh, just uh, using the directories in this list. And uh, For each file in the uh, given directory, uh, for, e for each directory, uh, we count the number of uh, files. This WC with L counts the number of line lines. But uh, first of all, we find all the files find uh, in this directory uh, type file, and then uh, we pipe this uh, output to the command. Uh, word count and we count the number of lines. So we are kind of counting the number of files here and we store it to this uh, table, uh, total, total files. And then uh, we count the number of uh, directories, the directories in, inside the, uh, the given home directory. And, uh, then this command to find the, the total uh, size of the directory. This uh, very total, total parameter are uh, declared here as uh, local uh, variables. So there are a bunch of uh, local uh, variables that are very only uh, uh, inside the function. This function report home uh, space. And uh, another different difference from the previous version of the script is that we are using printf, uh, print formatted, 
with printf uh, first first we give a format and then uh, we uh, give the variables that are going to be printed the format is uh, is defined here and it is uh, the same for all the uh, cases that we use uh, printf so uh, this is percentage 8s it is a string with length 8 i guess and percentage uh, 10s the, uh, this is a string with uh, length 10 and so on so this prints the first variable this prints the second uh, variable and this prints the third variable and here are the the headers and then uh, we, we print a separator below the headers and then we print the total deals total total files and total size uh, let, let's try this script Uh, this is the output from uh, that function and uh, we can also look at uh, this report with the uh, file browser Now we will see some uh, variable expansions. We have seen uh, the normal or the most uh, you, uh, the most common uh, variable expansions, but before that we will see some more. Uh, for example, we are declaring a variable with this. The variable a contains a, as value this string two, and to show the value in this variable, uh, we refer to the variable as dollar a which gives the value of this uh, variable which is uh, which is true in this case but uh, if we try for example this one it prints uh, empty or nothing because uh, it, it is looking for this variable the variable a underscore file and this variable does not exist Actually, what we wanted to do, we wanted to uh, print, we wanted to print the this variable and then to append to it this uh, underscore file. And uh, in order to do it correctly, uh, we use this split uh, basis, uh, which show the the bash that uh, it should print the value the value of this variable and then it will print the rest uh, as a string. Uh, which, which is this as an uh, appendix uh, to the value. If a, if a variable is unset or empty, for example, in this case, then uh, we can we can tell the we can tell bash to print a default value. For example, a is unset. Uh, we unset it. We give it an empty value. And if we print it like this. Since, uh, since A is unset, then uh, it will print uh, the given default value. And the uh, variable A is st still unset. So uh, this is like an if uh, statement. If a variable A is unset, then print uh, this one. Uh, there is a similar uh, 
but for this one is similar to the first one, but it, it also does an assignment. It also assigns the uh, default value to the variable a. So a is still unset. We try to uh, to print an unset uh, uh, an empty variable unset or empty. Uh, we try to print an empty value uh, variable. And in this case, uh, Bash will first assign this uh, default value to uh, A, and then we'll print it. So again, it is printing value, but uh, now the value of A uh, is default value. It, uh, it also assigns the value to, to the empty variable, uh, the default value. Assuming that uh, A uh, is not unset. So in this case, A is this, uh, has this value. Uh, if we try this statement again, now this A is not empty. So uh, it will not assign this default value but uh, we'll keep the value that it has. So uh, this one is like an, uh, like an if statement. If uh, variable A is empty, then assign uh, the value, uh, the default value to, to this variable, and then uh, it also prints it. So the difference is that if this is empty, it just uh, this value, but does not assign the value to the variable. Uh, in this case, if A is empty, then it assigns uh, the default value to the empty variable, and then uh, it will, uh, this echo will, will, will print it. Let's make the variable A empty again. Uh, we can also make it uh, empty with this one, unset A, for example. It is uh, almost the same thing. And uh, A, try uh, variable ex uh, ex expansion. Now, uh, this one with the uh, question mark uh, prints an error message uh, and prints this one as an error message. A is still un uh, empty or unset. So, uh, this is like, like an if. If, if A is uh, empty, uh, then print this error message. Uh, so, uh, it is printing it like, like an error message. Uh, we, ca we can try it again and see. The return uh, or the exit uh, code, the exit code one means that uh, the previous command uh, was executed was not executed successfully. If uh, we try another successful, uh, another command, for example, the exit code in this case is uh, zero, which means that it was executed successfully. So uh, this is like a like an if statement. If A is empty, print an error message uh, like this.
make sure that, let's make sure that it is again empty and uh, another variable So uh, if uh, we use this with the function with a plus, then uh, it will replace the value of uh, a if it is not empty. In this case, in this case, a is empty, and uh, so it, uh, it 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 is not replaced. So it remains empty. Uh, but if a uh, is something different different from empty. And we try it again. We see that uh, it will replace uh, the value A. And uh, so instead, instead of printing the value of A, it will print uh, this value. So it is like an if. If the variable a uh, is not empty, then instead of the value of a, return uh, this value. Replace the value of uh, variable with uh, this one. And there is another variable expansion uh, which uh, can list all the all the bash all the bash variables with uh, which start with a certain prefix. For example, so these are existing uh, variables uh, which exist in the shell environment. And uh, we are printing all the uh, all the variables which start with uh, this uh, prefix with uh, bash in, in this case. Now we'll see some uh, other string uh, operations. Let's uh, let's define uh, or let's assign first a test variable. If uh, we use this hash in front of the variable name, uh, it will uh, it it will give the length of the string. So the, uh, this uh, exclamation uh, point uh, will give all the variables that start with this prefix. Uh, this one will give the length of the content of this variable, how many uh, characters it has. We can uh, verify that it has uh, 22 characters with this command. Ah, it, it is 23 in this case because uh, echo prints an uh, end of line uh, after each string. So uh, if uh, we use it with the option dash n, uh, it will not print an end of line after the string. We can uh, extract a substring from a given uh, variable. Again, the variable foo, but uh, this column five 
uh, bash will replace this one with a substring that starts at, at the position five. So this is one, two, four, five. And it starts from uh, here. Uh, actually, it, it, this is uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it is uh, start from this one up to the string. So we are getting a sub substring from the value of this variable. And we can also give an length of the substring. In this case, we don't get the substring from the fifth character to the end of the string, but uh, a string, substring of length uh, six. So we are getting uh, six characters. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we can also check it with. And again, it is the end of line that uh, increases the number of uh, characters. This is uh, offset. This offset uh, five can also be uh, a negative number, in, in which case it will start counting from the end of the string. Uh, it will start counting the position from the end of the string, like this one. However, uh, there, there is a problem that uh, we have seen that this is used for something else in the bar for a default value. So to avoid this, uh, this uh, kind of uh, misunderstanding, we uh, use an empty space. So uh, it is uh, printing the substrings starting from the fifth character from the end. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, it, it starts from this up to the end. And we can also uh, use uh, length of the substring. In this case, uh, it will print only two characters starting from that one. Bash can also uh, replace some characters from the uh, beginning or end of the uh, the content of. The, uh, for example, let's say that we have a variable like. With uh, this hash, single hash, single hash, uh, we will uh, replace all the characters uh, that match uh, this pattern in the beginning of the content uh, of the string. So this uh, star and then dot uh, will uh, will match this file and then dot, and it will be uh, deleted. So this deletes some uh, characters from the beginning of the string. Which characters? The, char the characters that match this pattern. And uh, if we use a double hash, then this pattern matching is maximal. So uh, in this case, the, matter, uh, the pattern matching is minimal. It uh, matches up to the first, to the first uh, dot up to this. But if uh, we make it maximal, then it will match all the characters, including a dot, up to the last dot. So uh, this is a maximal uh, matching. And it, it will uh, remove all these characters from the beginning of the file. 
uh, from the beginning of, of the string. Because uh, this is uh, this is a variable which has a, a string uh, content. And uh, this one will uh, will remove characters from the end of the string, and it will uh, remove the characters that match this part this pattern dot uh, dot star in this case. So the the whole string is file dot text uh, dot zip, and the dot star uh, at the end of the string will match uh, dot zip, and it will be removed. And uh, again, if uh, we use a double percentage sign, then this matching this matching will be maximum. So a minimal matching match will uh, remove dot zip. A maximal match will remove from the first dot up to the, uh, from the first dot of the string up to the end of the string, including the dot, remove the dot as well. And we can also replace uh, something in, inside the content of a, a string. For example, if uh, the string is this one, then We can replace and uh, it will replace only the first uh, the first or the first occur occurrence of, of one. If uh, we want to replace all the occurrences of, of this uh, pattern, then we use the slash. So with a single slash, it will replace only the first match, uh, and the, with a double slash, it will uh, replace all the matches uh, of uh, of this string. And uh, there are also some vari variations. For example, uh, if uh, we use slash 10 percentage, it will, uh, will do the replacement at the end of the string. So only one uh, replacement, but starting from the end, uh, the match that is at the end. And uh, if uh, we use a hash, it, it will uh, replace the string from the, that uh, is matched in the beginning or starting from the beginning. And if uh, we leave out this replacement, so if uh, we don't give a replacement, it is like uh, give an empty replacement. It will be replaced. It will be replaced with an empty string, or it will be deleted. And uh, again. This deletes only the first occurrence, but if we use a double slash, it will delete all the occurrences of uh, of this uh, substring or or this pattern. And this one will delete from the from the end. And uh, with a hash, it will delete from the beginning. So it is actually doing a replacement, but uh, it is replacing it with an empty value. So it is practically uh, deleting it. Uh, 
the let's see a modified version of a longest word script that we saw before. Here uh, we we are doing this modification that uh, for find in order to find the length of the word, uh, so uh, this variable contains the words. It, it gets the one by one the words of the file, and in order to get the length of the word, we are using this uh, uh, variable expansion. So this will give the the length of the uh, variable j. Actually, let's uh, check the differences between uh, these two, uh, this version of the script and the previous one. So the only thing that is uh, that is uh, changed is that uh, this line uh, is removed and uh, instead of it it is replaced with uh, this line this line so we are uh, getting the of the word uh, with this variable expansion. And uh, this is actually uh, more efficient uh, than this one because uh, this one is using command expansion. So we are using a, com uh, a command here and we get the result of this uh, command and assign it to this variable. But uh, this is also a composed uh, command. Uh, we have a pipe and a pipe starts a subshell for uh, these two commands. And uh, so it is in general uh, less efficient than this, uh, this variable expansion. Uh, let, let's see if we can uh, make the difference uh, in the efficiency between these two uh, scripts. Uh, le let's get a, a test file with uh, many words. So we will find uh, the longest uh, word in this file uh, with both scripts. And uh, we give this, this file as an argument. And it, the the longest script is this one, uh, which contain uh, the the longest word uh, is uh, in this file is this one, which contains fifty six characters. But let's also uh, use the command time uh, before calling this script, and it will show us uh, how uh, long it is taking to execute. So. The the real time is a, a small fraction of the second. Uh, now let's write the same the same thing, but uh, with a script, which should be less efficient. So even without time, you see that it is taking much longer time.
So it takes 24 seconds, much, much longer time. So it makes a big difference. Uh, let, let's see again the difference between the two files. So uh, this is executed. Uh, uh, this is an internal uh, function of the of the bash and is executed immediately. But in order to execute this one, bash has to create uh, subshells. Uh, and then uh, st starting a uh, subshell takes takes a long time. Uh, uh, commands uh, calling uh, uh, a command also uh, take, takes some time because it needs to be loaded in the memory and etc. So it is obvious that this is much much more efficient. Now let uh, let's see also some uh, case conversion uh, conversions from uh, lower case to upper case and so uh, and vice versa. If, uh, if uh, we append a comma at the end of a variable name, then the first uh, the first character of the string will become lowercase. If uh, we append double comma, then all the string will become lowercase. And to convert to uppercase, we add this sign. It will this the first character uh, of the string to uppercase, and uh, this one will convert the, all the content of the screen uh, of the string to uppercase. And uh, it is also possible to declare variable uh, in Bash uh, such that it can contain only uh, uppercase or, or only lowercase uh, characters. For example, declare u foo. We are declaring this uh, variable foo, but uh, with this option u, it will con contain only uppercase uh, characters. No matter what characters we uh, give to it as a value. Uh, it, uh, they will be converted automatically to uppercase. For example, we are giving a mixed case uh, thing to this one, but if we see the content of this variable, it is all uppercase. And this is because of uh, this U when we declare uh, the variable. And uh, the same can be done also for uh, lowercase declaring lowercase variable. Uh, so this will contain only uh, lowercase characters. If uh, we give a mixed case uh, content to it, uh, we see that uh, it still has uh, been assigned a lowercase uh, string. And as we said before, with, uh, with unset, we can undeclare a variable. And also, of course, its content will become empty. And now if uh, we give again this uh, mixed uh, case string, uh, it will be uh, preserved uh, as given. Now we will see some arithmetic uh, evaluation and expansion. And uh, we have seen before that for arithmetic evaluation, 
we use this uh, syntax. And we have seen also this one for testing. So uh, this is for a bash expansion. And uh, so we get the value of the expression that is inside it. And this is for testing. We, uh, we have been using this for testing and also for uh, in the case of our loop. Let's see how we can uh, handle uh, different bases of uh, numbers. By default, the numbers are printed in 10. For example, uh, this is a base 10 uh, number, uh, this one. So we want to print eight uh, numbers, then we start with a zero. A number that start, starts with a zero is a base eight. Uh, or octal uh, number. So the value of uh, this uh, 0, 077 is a uh, 77 uh, octal number or with base eight. And so it's uh, 63. If uh, we want to print, uh, uh, we will to write an hexadecimal number, then uh, we uh, prefix it with zero uh, X. So this zero X FF is uh, treated as an hexadecimal number. For, for the other bases, we have to write uh, the base and hash. This is a base two, uh, 11. Base two, 11 is equal to three. And uh, any base can be used actually. This is a base, uh, base 766 number. Uh, time is almost up, but uh, maybe uh, we can continue for the and finish uh, that uh, we have planned to, to do today because uh, it is very easy actually uh, the, re the rest of the things is or maybe we can do it next next week uh, let me continue for five more minutes We have seen this uh, before that uh, this is uh, treated as an arithmetic uh, expression and uh, this gets its value and the shell extends this to the value of the arithmetic exp uh, expression. And instead of plus, uh, we can have other operators, for example, arithmetic, for example, uh, minus multiplication. Uh, this is power five to the power of two. And uh, this is division, but it is a natural number division. And this gets the remainder. Five uh, divided by two gives a, a remainder one. This is an example uh, that demonstrates the uh, modulo uh, operator. Uh, modulo operator is the remainder of division. So uh, we have a for loop that uh, counts from zero to 20. And uh, we see the remainder of each number when it is divided by five. And if the remainder is uh, zero, we print it with uh, this, uh, this pointy brackets. Otherwise, we just print the number uh, normally. And again, we are using the print F that we saw before. So this is the format of printing the number. And uh, this is the value which will be 
here as a digit, uh, as, as a as a number. So let, let's try it. So for the multiples of five, uh, we uh, point them out with uh, this. Uh, these brackets. And uh, we can also use assignment in the in an arithmetic expression. For example, uh, let, let's see, consider this example. So what is happening here is that we are giving a uh, value to, to this variable. We are giving to this variable the value five, and uh, this operation is uh, successful. And so uh, this is true, and uh, this is printed. This is printed. It is true. But uh, then uh, the the variable ha uh, has received the value five as a side effect. So uh, this is not an uh, comparison is full equal to five or not for a comparison we would have used uh, this double uh, double equal sign operator and we can also use this uh, uh, increment, in, incrementation uh, operators. For example, echo. So this prints uh, the value of two, and after printing it, uh, increments it by one. So when it is printed, it is one. But uh, then we see that the the value of two is equal to two. Let's make it again uh, one. Now, this these are similar to the C. Uh, this part first increments the value of foo and then uh, of this uh, variable. So if uh, we print foo, we will see that it has uh, the value two. Now, this is uh, the same uh, example as before, modulo, and we print uh, multiples of five, but uh, to make the test, we are using this arithmetic expression, and uh, inside we have an arithmetic, uh, an arithmetic expression. So, inside the expression, we use variables without a sign, and uh, uh, we get the remainder of five and compare whether it is equal to zero or not. There are also some uh, other operations, but let, let's see them uh, next time. Uh, now, let me check if there are any uh, questions.
Diego is asking, does bash have a null command just for having a place uh, holder? Yes, uh, bash uh, has a null command, which is uh, this one, semicolon. For example, uh, if uh, true, then do nothing. This is a null command, which means uh, do nothing. Else, so uh, this is actually true. So we run this uh, uh, with null command, which means do nothing. So uh, nothing is printed. But uh, if we modify it, for example, like this, if false, then do nothing. Uh, else, uh, therefore, it is false. Now, uh, it, it will be a syntax error if uh, we just leave it empty. So, if uh, let's say that if we want to do nothing and we don't press anything, uh, this will give us syntax error because after then a command is exp uh, is extend expected after then and uh, in this case we use a, a null command it means uh, do nothing. Next question, Diego, is it uh, possible to do something like uh, echo? Uh, yeah, it, it should be, it should be possible because uh, placing. Uh, Variable extension is uh, recursive, I guess. Uh, let, let me uh, let, let me have an example. Okay, the example that you are using here uh, is is okay. Uh, so you're replacing something from the beginning of of the file, and you are doing it uh, twice recursively. Uh, let, let's try it. For example. So, This is uh, uh, the replacement inside the variable. Now let's try the. the uh, now th there is something uh, wrong with uh, this example. And le let's see how it is wrong. Now, uh, the problem with this one is that it expects, the bash expects this one to be a variable name. And uh, if this variable, if a variable with this name exists, then it will work fine. It will try to make this, uh, this uh, deletion at the beginning of, uh, of the string, of the content of this variable. But uh, in our case, we don't have such a variable. So uh, I guess that it will just, yeah, but uh, it gives the best sub substitution. Yeah. I don't know. May maybe it is not possible. I'm not sure. Hamza is asking, uh, can you give us homework? Uh, I learn more by uh, doing things. Uh, yes, uh, Hamza, let, let me show you uh, something. Uh, Actually, uh, this is recorded, and you can, uh, you can repeat these commands uh, later. Watch it uh, again, and then repeat the commands. And uh, also, there is There is this Moodle page for the course here at uh, Linux command. 
Uh, I'm logging in as a guest, but you can also log in as a real user. And uh, here we are at the end of uh, the course. Actually, this is the next to last lesson. Uh, next week will be the last le lesson. So we are here. And there, there are the, uh, these interactive uh, tutorials. Uh, you, you can check them. And uh, here you also have the uh, the possibility to to try the uh, the commands or the examples. So all the commands that uh, I have uh, given in this lesson are also recorded here, and you can try them for I A B C D do. So you can try all of them. And uh, uh, another thing is that you can you can download these examples and watch the recorded lesson and uh, and try the examples uh, yourself. And uh, there are also some uh, if you if you want there are also some assignments if you want to complete them. Uh, the second assignment has these two requ requests. Uh, write a script that solves the problem of Towers of Hanoi, and uh, there is an article which uh, helps, and also an algorithm. And uh, write a script that calculates the Fibonacci numbers. You can uh, users help this algorithm. And uh, by the end of the next lesson, I will also uh, try to solve these uh, assignments. Uh, to give the solution to to these assignments, if uh, we have time. So uh, I think there are no other questions. So uh, let me uh, stop the recording and uh, see you next time. <laughs>